Hey, welcome to the Ultra High Net Worth Clients podcast. I'm your host, Chris Broaddead. We started this podcast as a way to create a central resource of the best financial advisor practice growing tips shared by the most outstanding advisors in the industry, of which our guest today is definitely one. These outstanding financial advisors agreed to be on the show and provide a ton of value for free, all in the hopes that our audience might learn from their words. My father was a financial advisor, and financial advisors are the main clients we serve. So our marketing agency's mission is to help every financial advisor grow their business in an effort to help the world become more financially secure. Today, we have the rare pleasure of talking with an incredible financial advisor, Meredith Schneider. Meredith, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm based in Northern California, although I have clients all over the U.S. and the world. Um, typically, most of them are working in the tech field and both software and hardware engineered um, areas. And I've been working in serving clients for over 26 years. And yeah. So you started when you were three? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I have two kids. And uh, I also had them when I was very young. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that that's great. So, uh, you're you're from that area as well. That's where you grew. I up? was born in San Francisco and raised on the peninsula. I did go to school on the East Coast, and I lived in Europe for a number of years. Oh wow! Okay, back to the East Coast, and then back right back to where I started. Yeah, yeah. You you left uh, to go to Yale, which uh, is very very exciting. That's really it cool. was it was exciting. It was a privilege. Yeah, yeah. Um. I I would love to know. Um, so you you went to Yale and then you spent some some time as a uh, uh, in in the army. How how did you make that decision to to serve our country? Sure. Um, so when I was seventeen, yesterday, um, <laughs> uh, I had an opportunity to. I was granted an ROTC scholarship for which I applied, of course. Um, and my my thought at the time was. Um, <clears throat> that uh, I wanted to serve our country and um, this was an opportunity and I felt that um, if I if I felt that if we had a, a, a defense force that um, what, I just felt like a call to service. So I did get an ROTC scholarship and so I was in ROTC, although at the time Yale did not have ROTC, so I had to attend all my classes at other state uh, universities throughout the state. Um, and so when I graduated, I was commissioned a second lieutenant, and then I went off to Germany for four years, which, and then Bosnia, um, with the NATO peacekeeping force. Yeah. And then, and then that was, the, that was it for my, my army service. Wow. What, what was it like, uh, serving overseas? Well, I will say it was amazing to have my formative adult years growing up in Germany or Europe. Um, it was quite frankly pretty dang awesome um yeah yeah um it i did have to say though i thought it was kind of interesting how you know i was i was an american military member living in germany and i thought gosh if, if the reverse were true that would probably feel really weird for americans you know <laughs> if there was like a big german army base you know next door to me i i would think that'd feel strange so i always wondered how well i i met lots of germans of course when i was there but anyway so that did cross my mind how that must feel a, like a different experience for them. Um, but yeah, living in Europe was certainly, a, a, I mean, I got to travel all the time and that was real privilege. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is, uh, it is interesting that we still have, uh, bases in, in countries that, you know, we fought 80 years ago. <laughs> well, yeah. In Korea, it's, it's, it's still an active engaged border. Never, yeah, that never stopped. Yeah, yeah, um, but that's a topic for another show. Indeed. Did did, <laughs> did, uh, did you learn German while you were there? So yeah, so fun fact: um, they teach everyone a little German when you arrive, which is great. It's usually phrases like "Wo ist der Bahnhof?", which is "Where is the train station?" Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's basic stuff. But you know what they don't teach California girl is how to drive in the snow. So that That's was my tough. first time living in the snow, and it was really trial by fire slash snow because one day it snowed, and then all of a sudden I had to drive, and I was like, wait a second. 
<laughs> I don't know. So for me, that was that was a radical shift for, as well. Um, yeah, so, but I did work with Americans a lot. So it's not I, my language proficiency was not as awesome as you might imagine living there for four years. But certainly, yeah, basic German. I had learned French in high school and college, so my French is actually still stronger than my German. And then I did learn some Serbo-Croatian when I went into Bosnia. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that, that's the that's the issue I'm running into uh, in Spain as well. It's like all my friends are Americans. You know, my wife is American. We just speak English all the time. So it's like, why am I not learning Spanish? It's like, oh, because I'm not using it. <laughs> probably a lot of the Spaniards know English and they probably know English they better do. than you know Spanish. And, yeah. Right? So they, they do kinda, English and... They kind of laugh at you when you try. You're like, oh, yeah. uh, que tal? And they're like, what can I get you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, let's put us both out of our miseries right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, wow, that's, well, that's, uh, uh, that's a very u- unique path in, in this industry. I, how did, so what, what <laughs> next? What, what uh, drew you to this wild world of well, finance? I, I, right after the army, I did go to law school. <clears throat> Um, And I did that in D.C. And it was a bit of a culture shock for me, to be honest, because not only was I returning to the States, which that in and of itself was one thing. um, But let's see how I can say this. In the military, I would say most of my fellow soldiers were very service oriented and very about dedicating themselves to the country and for a greater purpose. It wasn't really about yourself because I mean, the army is a tough life. It's not really a life people go into because it's like easy and quick. It's it's not. It's really hard um, on many levels. And um, so when I got to D.C., the, this is getting sort of interesting. I didn't anticipate going down this path. But anyways, going, you know, the, the our nation's capital. Um, I was like excited because I was like, oh, people here are dedicated to serving um, the country because you know, in a different capacity, you know, whether it's whatever branch of government, there's a lot of people in the, you know, the DC area that serve the federal government, which I thought was the same as how I felt in the military. You know, we're here to serve the people. And I just encountered a really different culture. Um, and it was surprising to me, uh, that people who actually had pretty easy lives by easy, I mean, you know, not getting deployed to (laughs) difficult, um, danger yeah. zones and not being away from families and the kind of food you can choose what food you eat you know basic mm-hmm. stuff um and they weren't as dedicated to serving and i thought gosh you have it so much easier and yet i don't know it's it was it was really it, i was younger i'm uh it was just a sort of a surprise to me um so that so anyways that was a shock and then um i just a lot of self-reflection on like well what's what's my next move and so um, after that, I moved to California back and I had an uh, opportunity to work at um, a consulting company and then a tech company. And that's, you know, what brought me back to California. And then when I was working for the tech company, I had something called stock options. And at the time, mm. it was brand new. Pretty much no one knew what those were, which is sort of funny to say now. But at the time, no <laughs> one really, they just didn't know what they were. And so yeah. I did a lot of research on what they were and how they worked and Um, And then a lot of my fellow employees would come to me and, you know, ask me for help. And when I left that company, I had a moment to pause and go, you know, what's my next move? And I always heard, like, do what you're do what you would do without getting paid. Uh, You know, Mm -hmm. like that's an interest. And I thought, well, I was helping my fellow employees and they they for sure were were not paying me anything. I was just helping them. So then I that's I explored that path. And that's, you know, that's the that's the long answer, I guess, to where I got how I got to where I am today. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. So w- when did you transition out of the, the tech company to, to do financial advising full time? Uh, what year? Is that what you're asking me or? Um, I guess I meant to say how, like, how did you do that? Or oh, like, what, what was the, the driver? Yeah. So I didn't really, to be honest, I, I, I didn't know much about the industry at all. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, I, I guess it, I learned at the time that you reach out to all your friends and people you know and to ask. And so I said, I'm, I'm interested in learning about this field. So I started doing informational interviews. And, and I share this story with my kids because I say, you know, you can do it too when you're exploring the world and careers. Um, 
I talked to one person and it was really a small boutique firm. I want to say they had like maybe four people and they're like, so it was an informational interview and it was really, but they weren't hiring and, and that was, a, that was fine. I was literally just trying to learn. And then that person referred me to another person and she taught, taught, you know, I learned a lot from her and same thing. We're not hiring, but you might want to talk to this person who I really admire. So then I talked to him, informational interview, super interesting. They were all, they were different, all three different places. And then after that third one, he came back to me and said, well, we're actually hiring. And, I, and at that point, I was, after having done a lot of informational interviews, I was, because I was exploring different avenues, I, I had come to the decision that that was a path I wanted to pursue. So I was like, oh, let's talk more. And so that was at Smith Barney. Um, and he hired me and they, they I got training, um, six months of just dedicated training, nothing but training, you know, flying to Connecticut and New York. Um and then I worked there for about nine to 10 years. Mm -hmm. I launched out on my own independent after that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So what, what, what was the, the moment that you were like, this is not working. I need to go out on my own and, and do this. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know that there was a moment. I think, I think a big catalyst for me was because Smith Barney was actually pretty good. It was I wasn't unhappy. It wasn't like um, there was what there was a thing that did sort of find a frustrating, which was there was two things actually. You, it's a big corporation, or was now it's a part of Citibank, and, but um, you know big corporations move slowly. So I would often have ideas what on many different fronts, whether it was marketing, whether it was investment, whether it was client service, and the answer I would often get was either no. Or we'll think about it and it would just take like so long to move forward. And um, and then sometimes the things that I said initially, they said no to. But later they did. And I was like, hey, yeah, I had a good idea. Um, and then the other thing is there's, for the most part, I could help clients with all sorts of things. But sometimes clients would come to me and say, hey, I need help on this. And I had to say, well... Although we do, you know, I am able to help you with 99% of what you need. There's, you know, some areas where I, I can't help you. And I just, I really wanted, I felt like that was <clears throat> just not the full service that I want to provide. Again, it wasn't like I was completely, it was like terrible and I wasn't able to do much, but I just felt like I wanted to have, I wanted to be able to say like, look, if this is what clients want and this is what clients need and can benefit, I don't, I want to have them have that availability. And then simultaneously with that, a friend of mine, he had left and gone independent. so. I think that also um, influenced me because he's like, Meredith, mm -hmm. you can do this other way. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's exciting. Um, I, I failed to ask kind of like how you built your practice to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. it, it sounds like you, you know, you were a, a tech worker. So did that become like your first niche? So when I first started, um yeah i mean it's sort of so I, I first started through cold calling and you cold call the, the people that are in your area and one of the dominant industries obviously where i live in silicon valley is tech so um part of it was um a reflection of where i was um part of it was also so um i what <laughs> i'm, I'm going to show a little naivete uh at the time um, I, uh, I was calling on some, co some companies and I was having success. And then some of the other people in my office came and told me, oh, you're not allowed to call those companies. And I was like, really? And they're like, yeah, th those are, those are for us. And, uh, I just <laughs> sort of took it and, uh, I didn't really think anything of it. So it forced me to go outside of like whatever, what everyone else is doing and whatever, basically no offense, but like all the men, like uh, there was a lot of men in the industry at the time, um, still are. But um, so all the guys were like, nope, you can't do this. And so I just listened to them and I, I went different paths. And so I often at that time would um, connect with like less known companies, like, for example, Cisco. They're like, nope, you can't, you can't talk to Cisco. And I was like, OK. So my path was sort of constrained by my peers because they felt competition is the truth. Um, so cold calling was really a foundation. You know, from there, it was uh, referrals from clients. 
Um, and then that, then I started bumping up against what I mentioned earlier, which was I had some ideas and um, the firm uh, wouldn't allow doing certain things. And so I was like, gosh, there's new, new ways to communicate and reach out to people, but I can't do it. So that was okay. dovetailed with what I said. I'm I'm noticing a, a trend here. You you seem to seek out uh predominantly male industries. Uh to I don't I don't think it's by design, to be honest. <laughs> I really don't. I, I know I know it seems like that, but I mean I don't I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. It's not, yeah. it's not by design. Not by design. Okay. Well it's um, it's impressive nonetheless. Um do you do you think your experience and in, in time in the army uh, impacted how you uh, made your way in, you know, another predominantly male uh, industry? You're asking some really interesting questions. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever been asked these kind of questions. Um, a couple of things. I mean, the army, you have, I was a leader, I was an officer. You have to be strong in the face of adversity and tough times. So for sure, building up kind of confidence in tough situations for sure was something I developed in the military. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say that one thing that sort of surprised me is that when I was in the army, it was very, cause the, the army is all about rules and, um, very strict, not strict, uh, straightforward communication. Um, and one thing that was clear when I was there is that sexism is not okay. Racism is not okay. Like the word, it was very, and, and, and if you would counter it, here's what you can do to rectify mm -hmm. it. And as a result, I, I, to be honest, I don't really, I don't really feel like I felt much sex, if any sexism in the army. Um, uh, and so when I got out and I was in the civilian world, it's not the same. I actually, I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, wait, what's going on? That's not Okay. And also, hey, wait, wow. if something's not right, what, what's the path? Like, it was, it was less of a, I, I think, I suspect times are different now. But at the time, um, I was really surprised that the armies, uh, you know, which is such a clearly male-dominated sort of situation. And um, historically, you know, mostly only men. Um, I was surprised that that was a place where I felt less sexism because i mean it's a physical job like and they're you know financial service is not so much but i mean you know there's 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 times where having strength is you know helpful um mm -hmm. so there's kind of some jobs that are m men can find easier let's put it that way because mm -hmm. just inherent strength yeah so yeah, like it well... seems like if you're farther away from a job that requires physical strength it just would it would just sort of by logic, I would think, oh, it would be less important, but yeah. it's actually sort of yeah. different. Well, well, uh, big shout out to the army for being way, way ahead of the curve there. That's, uh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't really realize it either until I got out, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I just thought, okay. <laughs> You're like, oh, <laughs> the, the world is, is more fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, wait a minute. No, they're, they're ahead of the curve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, that's, uh, that's really interesting. I hadn't heard that. So what, uh, you know, we, we've had a, a number of uh, female advisors, you know, we, we definitely aim to have, have as diverse, um, uh, of guests as possible. Do you have any advice for up and coming, uh, female financial advisors on, you know, dealing with, uh, predominantly male industry? Um, I think any advice I have would not be different by gender other than the thing that <clears throat> distinguishes men and women, generally speaking, is um, being pregnant and having children. You know, mm. what a man experiences is different than what a female experiences, which mm. is a bring me to another story, which you're going to you're going to think this makes me sound old, but I think it's really a re reflection of the industry in terms of how many women are in it. But when I was pregnant with my children. I uh, asked around, hey, what, what, how does this work? You know, I'm going to have to take some time off. And the company I was working for had maternity policies, certainly, but they didn't have, um, they didn't have someone in my position 
I couldn't find anyone in my position who had experienced and utilized those. So, oh wow, yeah. So again, there were women, say, like in support staff who might have, but someone who's working with clients directly. Yeah, I know. It's oh wow, well, completely right. You're thinking, surely. I was shocked. Like I, I literally asked and asked and asked. again. It's because the pool of women already was there's just not that many women. Mm-hmm. So ask around, ask around. Finally, I couldn't find anyone west of the Mississippi. Like, I'm not kidding. Yeah, I know. Oh. It, it, even as I've verbalized this, I'm thinking you must be not believing me, but it's true. <laughs> no, I, I believe you. <laughs> so I had to talk to someone, but also makes me think, am I really that old? I don't think I'm that old. But anyways, no. I did actually find someone to say like, you know, how do you, how do you manage this? You know, you're gone. For, you know, you're going to be gone for a period of time, but you don't, you know, how does that work? And so she gave me some um, feedback. You're like, but how do babies it, work? Well, not not that part. It's about managing clients and helping clients. Right. Um, and when I talked to like HR, like they were also like, gosh, you know, yeah, we don't we don't know. We we don't actually have like there was no there was nothing. Wow. So I had to just make oh it all. Gosh. I was basically making stuff up because no one had anything. There was no <laughs> rules, policies. Wow. Um, so again, I suspect that's different today. Um, yeah. But to but I say that because that is that is really kind of the only time that I can think of where gender was a distinct thing that was apparent for me. Um, mm-hmm. And so back to your question, um, do I have any advice on that particular piece? Gosh, that's a very big question. Oh, well, that's, uh, because having children is a whole other big thing. And um, uh, but I, I suppose... Uh, it's like anything in life. Um, you look for the resources to support you and make sure you try your best in all categories, which sounds like a platitude. Um, mm. I'm hesitating because like it's such a big topic like to like delve into it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure that's <laughs> that you want me to dominate the whole conversation without a minute of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, you're you're without question a trailblazer and, and these are, you know, for lack of a better term, these are burdens of a trailblazer. So, you know, and, and you know, we're, we're talking like, like, oh, you know, this seems like a lot longer ago, but like this, you know, I, I don't right. think you're alone in, in like right. the last tw- 10 or 20 years. Like, yeah, I had to like write the maternity leave policy. <laughs> right, right. They never had it before. Yeah. Well, to be clear, they so, did have a maternity leave policy, just not, they didn't have like structure around my position for someone in my yeah, position. Yeah, yeah. So. That's uh, that's that's really incredible. So how how did you handle it? Did you you ended up uh, taking off uh, oh, a little bit of time? Or yeah, I, I did take up a little bit of time, and then I, um, I had a colleague of mine who was you know the go to person for the clients, um, and uh, and of course all my clients knew. So I did a lot. I put a lot of time and energy into doing sort of upfront work, and you know if something was going to maybe fall. During the time I was out, if I could handle it before I went out, I tried to handle it then. Um, and I, I was only gone, I, I i would say three months. I can't remember exactly. But um, so it wasn't like this gigantic, enormous period of time. Um, and uh, yeah, I suspect that's probably how everyone does it today. But I mean, um, but just, you know, handling stuff. Yeah, just really ramping up and trying to prepare and. And I and I the colleague I asked to do that, he is someone I trusted. Um, I thought he was is wise. And um, yeah, so I, I selected him. I cho- asked him and chose him on purpose. Mm-hmm. And and I imagine, you know, nowadays with Zoom, um, it, it may be more feasible and doable to take off more time because you're like, yeah, you know, while they're napping, we can hop on Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. It's pretty tough yeah. to, I yeah. mean, the younger the child is, the harder it is because of sleep. Yeah. You just, it's just exhausting. I yeah. can only imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. My, my, but my, when I went back to work, yeah, it was definitely easier. Mm-hmm. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So let, let's get back to your uh, going independent. So when you took that plunge and, and make that, made that decision, were were you able to bring your book over uh, with you to start? Um, so 
uh, I do remember, I forget the terms, but there's a certain amount of, you know, you're not allowed to talk to previous clients. There was like um, some kind of agreement or again, I'm, I'm, fu I'm had fuzzy on the details because it's been so long. Um, so I wasn't able to like reach out to clients, but if clients sought me out, then they could work with me. And and in some cases, certainly some clients who were working with me did seek me out and then continue <laughs> working with me. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, they, they know you and have the relationship with you and they're like, what? No, she's leaving. I'm going with her. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. That's great. So then w when you went independent, did your marketing and then client finding strategies change? Did you shift focus to a, a new niche or what, what, what happened there? Yeah, no, I didn't change the niche in terms of the clients that um, I work with, but I would say like it definitely opened up the doors because as I mentioned, I, that was one constraint I did feel. Um, so, you know, just having my own website is, you know, obviously a first start, but like nonetheless, it's like I'm able to craft a message and put the message out that that's me and, you know, what I'm trying to to do help clients with. Um, so that's like just the first step. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, from there, it's it's hard for me to remember now like what was available because you know things like instagram for example were not available then but they are now so i'm like trying to remember what thing i adopted right then but whatever whatever new technology was available i did adopt it i just can't remember what it was because yeah. i definitely had some things were not available to me while i was there so i definitely then did embrace them awesome yeah. um did you find any interesting or effective marketing strategies when you first went independent and are you you know obviously marketing changes are you employing any exciting marketing strategies uh these days um so the first thing i will say is i was surprised at and this could be a reflection of where i live i was surprised at the level of wealth People with the amount of wealth that would look on, you know, uh, do like a Google search or whatever and seek me out, not through a referral. Meaning my digital uh, footprint, uh, life, uh, I don't know, uh, struggling for the right word, um, reputa reputation, I'm not sure. But um, they, in my mind, I thought, oh, you know, someone with tens of millions, hundreds of millions, they're probably going to go through, you know, and, and many probably do. Um, if I'm going to get a referral from that, those kind of people, they're probably going to be from a center of influence, like an accountant or a, another client or a state planning attorney, which again, for sure does happen. But I would, I would get, I get inquiries from people that are purely just do a Google search online and do an internet search and find me and then reach out directly to me. And um, that that was just a, I, I mean, that's just like me having, I guess, a, a constrained um, mindset because the truth of the matter is, I mean, why not? Right. But it gets it just it just surprised me. So having that digital footprint definitely um, brought, you know, uh, potential clients to me in terms of um, I think you asked, do I have an innovative marketing? Is that what you're saying? Or any excited any marketing strategies right now that you're excited about? Um, so I have a presence on YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, obviously website. Um, and I did start doing video last summer. And my idea there was twofold. One, if I can share just sort of like you're doing right now, if I can share something with someone that can help that person, then I'm all for that. Um, if that person also needs help, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, engage and find out if, if we're a good fit. Um, and I think video is a way of conveying, as I'm sure you've already gathered yourself, um, you know, person, I think it's a better sense of a person through video than ri the written word. So mm -hmm. my idea behind that is be myself, you know, the people that will like that will, you know, want to talk to me more and, and, you know, some people who won't like it. <laughs> It will be like a, a more of a faster filter kind of thing. Um, yeah. So and through that, what's, what's sort of funny to me, though, is 
I mean, it's not even been a year, so I can't really draw start, start conclusions. But I'm, it's the the analytics that I see are sort of interesting in terms of, uh, like I get more interest from people who find me through Google, but they stay on the website less. So that tells me that like, okay, the numbers are there in terms of higher volume, but the connection is weaker. Now that I don't know if that's a reflection of. I don't know what that is. I can't draw conclusions. But whereas like people that, that find out about me from LinkedIn, there may be fewer numbers, but then they 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 look at the, you know, the website and look at and read stuff longer. So I I don't I don't have conclusions. I just see that as an observation. I'm not sure what that means, but um so. and, and what inspired you to start uh, down the video path um well i think it's just what i said in terms of sharing it, i if i can share with people and that ha- helps them um but did you like see someone else doing video or or how did how did that become like oh, a, a viable strategy that's a good question um so i think simultaneously oh okay i think i can so i started doing improv about two years ago Oh, cool. I, I've done that as well. In Chicago. Have you? Yeah, I, I took a bunch of classes. In Second Chicago. Uh, in, uh, What was it? Improv Olympic and Annoyance. They're kind of like and... se- second tier uh, schools. Oh, interesting. We should maybe yeah. talk offline about that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, that's um something that I do on the weekends. Uh, and so when I started doing that, I got encouraged to try out for some film roles. And I was like, OK, I'm, I'm really pretty busy. Um, but they're like, no, oh, you can do small. So I tried out for like, um, like a student film role, and I got a lot Whoa. of, yeah, yeah. I got I can because of my my life and schedule, I can only do something that's like a one day kind of thing. It, no mm-hmm. long, you know. So, but, um, so anyways, so then when I did that, I thought I, I really don't know what I'm doing. So then I I took a class, you know, acting for film, and um, and that got me more comfortable in front of a camera because I will say if I had to rewind. Before all of this experience, being on camera was uh, not my, it's not something I was comfortable with. This is, I suppose, lack of experience, but it's not something that I ever thought about, gravitated towards. Um, so I, I suspect that's probably, that happened simultaneous with this. So I guess it just sort of was like, oh, I was doing that. I might as well go and do that. Because I did a lot more writing before then, I have to say. Now, your, I guess your question is prompting me to reflect. I I hadn't really thought about it because I was doing more writing before all of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I'm uh I'm an aspiring uh screenwriter director myself. Okay. Cool. Well. Yeah, yeah. So that that's cool. Uh, what what were you writing? What, what oh, the writing stuff? I'm talking about for um. For clients, so it's so it's what oh, I'm I sharing, see. like blog posts. Video now, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sharing like in a written blog, and I still do some writing. Um, yeah, yeah. It takes a lot of time to write, though. It's like, I mean, video. I, actually, I'm sure you, knowing now that what you just said, uh, you know, I I produce. It's like a minute when I produce things, and uh, it takes like at least an hour. Yeah. <laughs> to get together that one minute. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that that's why I love these podcasts so much because, you know, we're going to end up talking for, you know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. Each one of those minutes can be a video. 30 seconds can be a video. So we're talking, you know, 40, 80, 90 videos here. <laughs> right. Oh, that's an excellent point. Oh, you've got me yeah. thinking. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I, t- I tell financial advisors, I'm like, you can do one of these a month and like your entire social media channels will be full for a month right you know you can have a conversation with someone who's interesting right and and then you're you're good (laughs) you got my wheels turning that's yeah yeah but you have to do invest you have to invest time too right because you have to like reach out to people and and as we did coordinate schedules and so there's Mm -hmm. definitely still some work you have to do no absolutely showing up it's it's not just a on button um but but it is (laughs) in my experience it's it's less effortful. It's, you know, we hop on here, we have a conversation. I enjoy it. I, you know, hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and then we got a ton of content. <laughs> oh, yeah. Interesting. You know? Okay. So, you got yeah. my real thing. 
<laughs> um, awesome. All right. Well, we are uh, coming towards the end of our time together, uh, unfortunately. Um, I have one final question for you. It is uh, open-ended. You can take it in any direction that you like. And that question is, what are you working towards? What am I working towards? <clears throat> um, I would say fundamentally, I'm always working towards growth. So whether it's growing my business, growing the services we can provide clients, growing personally, uh, whether it's skill sets, whether it's uh, whatever it might be, I would say I'm not a stay. I, I'm I'm gr- I'm moving towards growth. Awesome. If you ain't growing, you're dying. Yeah, that's kind of how yeah. I feel. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Awesome. And where can our audience find out more about you? So the website is uh, probably the most content-rich area, which is www.schneiderwealth.com. On Instagram, it's also Schneider Wealth. On YouTube, I should know this off the top of my heart. I think it's something like, uh-oh, what is it? Um, I think it's something like, oh, gosh, do you have a moment? Can I look that up? Let's see. Yeah. And we'll we'll link to it in the show notes okay. and website. Um, it's just uh, uh, the YouTube created it for me. That oh, yeah, it's the Schneider Wealth Management. Mm. Oops. Okay. Turn that off. Um, <laughs> back to you. Sorry, I took yeah. away. Uh, no YouTube, Instagram. Oh, I'm on LinkedIn as well. Um, Meredith Schneider. Yeah, those are the places. Awesome, and we'll definitely link to those in the show notes. Cool. Uh, Awesome. Well, Meredith, this was really, really cool. I, you're, yeah, you thanks ama- for your amazing story. <laughs> Thank you. you know, I mean, re- reflecting on a lot of things I haven't really thought about. So that's yeah, really cool. Yeah. It's just I'm trying to add different levels of value here. Uh, awesome. All right. And to our audience out there, thanks so much for tuning in. Keep on growing out there, everybody. See ya.